Howdy, how are you doing today? Recently I got a question about detention sizing for single event storm water events. And I know this is an older method, but I'm realizing that actually with some of the newer tools, people might not remember or realize how to do this. So today I'm gonna to walk you through how to do that in HydroCAD, an older software, not free unfortunately, but there is a trial version that you can use online, which is what I, I have going right now. Probably most of uh, your companies probably pay for this. Again, it's not the best software out there, but it's relatively simple and it's good for teaching you know, this sort of concept. All right, so a recent a local jurisdiction near me in Washington County called Clean Water Services has this requirement. And the first thing we wanna do is just check what the requirements are. So this is chapter four, runoff treatment and control. And I know where I wanna look first is a place called table 4-2, which basically tells you, you look at the size of your project, um, and you figure out which category that you're in. So category one has certain requirements, two and three have different ones. Now I'm gonna go with the category three project. So I'm gonna call this two acre project that we're working on, just over 80,000 square feet. And you can see as I scroll down the category, there's different requirements. I guess the two options I have are flow duration matching detention or peak flow matching detention. So this flow duration curve is gonna continue a simulation model, the newer standard for flow control. Um, at least in the Northwest, but I want to do, I'm going to pick this option of peak flow matching detention. So that's section 4.08.6 where I want to jump. So this is probably what you're used to seeing using one of these type of softwares. These are, this is actually quite old FHMS, SWIM. I've shown you SSA and other, other videos, um, but today I want to talk to you about what I'm going to call uh, another standard, which uses the SBUH or type methodology. First thing I'm gonna do is just click somewhere and I got my detention example. Let's walk through what I'm actually trying to do here. Looks like there's two options. One would be having the post development peak rate match the pre-development peak rate. And the other option would be having the post development peak rate match for the five and 10 year. And then the two year would actually be half of the pre-development rate. So basically what that means is I'm going to have to have less water running off my site after my development for this two-year event than I do currently. So this is going to necessitate a pretty large stormwater facility in a pretty small orifice compared to what you might expect in this other example. Another good thing to take note here, and this is actually, I'm not sure this is spelled out everywhere, but this is really good design and language. If the resulting orifice size is less than the minimum diameter listed, and under design standards in section 4.09, the post-development flow may be printed to have exceed the target. So this is basically saying by design a facility, I come up with an orifice size of 0.1 inches, like really small, small enough that's going to plug up. So they're like, don't put that in. We don't want, um, we don't want any orifices smaller than, I don't know, half an inch or one inch, relatively small, but not too small that you're going to get a piece of dirt stuck in there or a rock, and then it's not going to work. So I'm going to go with this option first, because this is going to just be a little bit easier to do. So how do you do this in HydroCAD? So I prefer doing a little bit of text. I can just drag this over. I'm gonna call this my e development, just so I can kind of remember what I want. And I'm gonna bring in a sub category, right click on this and go to edit. I'm gonna call this two acres of, and I can click on this and this is gonna be your pre-development curve number. So this is basically saying how much water is happening before you have development. I'm gonna call this hydraulic group C and I will call this 74. This is not actually a huge, uh, I would say this is not a super low curve number. This is something that we would be able to do detention for. As you get lower and lower, it's going to make your pond bigger and bigger. And at some point, for some of these smaller curve numbers, especially hydrologic groups A and B, you typically would be able to do infiltration for some of these. So actually, I'm going to pick this one here about roughly double click on it and it just puts that number in. I have two acres of this and I'm going to, I actually quite like this large areas because it does it in acres, which I prefer. And then you can put these in as you want. I'm gonna just call this direct entry and I'm gonna put in put in 20 minutes here. And okay, but if, if you wanted to put in lengths and you could, you could put in sheet flow, shallow concentrated flow, and then channel flow and have them add up for you if you wanted to. I usually like making a spreadsheet myself or just putting a relatively conservative number in there and okay. And I need to now set up my storm event. And I believe it gives this number to you in here. Let me see where that is. Okay. This is where that gives that to you. Two years. So I need to do two year, 10 year, and 25 year, I believe. Two, 10, and 25. So I'm going to put in, click on this. 
and I have the option of doing TR20 or SBUH. I'm going to pick SBUH here because I'm in the Northwest. If I was somewhere else in the country, I probably would pick here SES rainfall. And I, this is one thing you want to make sure you get right rainfall type one. So you can see where you are in the country. I am a type one A up in here in the Pacific Northwest. Most of the country is a type two. I want to make sure you pick that correctly. Oftentimes you can actually pick the exact state you're in if you want, but I'm just going to click right here on the type type one A 24 out. It actually probably says that. Well, it, it should say that in here somewhere, but I'm not sure if it does. All right. So I'm going to hit 2.5 inches and I'm going to call this 2.5 inch. And I'm going to call this two. I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to make one called 3.45. Call this five and call this 10 year. I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to come in here. I'm going to do 3.9 and I'm going to call this 25 year. These are different events and I'm going to time span. I usually like to make this zero to 30. I'm going to make this 0 0.01. So this is basically making my model have more data points. You can see how many hydrograph points I'm having I'm basically increasing the fine fineness of my model. And then I think that is enough. Okay. So I can actually double click on this now and it should give me a flow rate and you can see it's telling you this is my 25 year event. So if I do 2.24 CFS, if I change this to 25 year, it gives me 0.69 CFS. Now I, again, I could, I could go in here and I just right click at the E for edit. I could change this to, and if I change this to 95, 98, what do you typically see? Now my flow rate is 1.53. So that's probably what we're going to be working with for our post developed. But I'll switch this back to 79. Yeah, okay. Now one thing that I really like about this little tab here, now there's a tab here called events, which you can click on and I can hit update and it'll actually do all three storm events that I have in my model or, or if I had more in there, do you think it'd be more? It gives you the total rainfall in inches, gives you the runoff and also gives you the volume. And so this is the total volume. So 2.5 inches is converted into that's how much water is landing on your site in a two year event. How much of that actually runs off is 0.14. And actually, if I double click on this, go back to the hydrograph here, it's telling me 3.9 inches is, this is for a 25 year. Let me go back to the two year. 2.5 inches is landing on the site, but only 0.84 is running off. And then it converts that 0.84 into a peak flow rate of 0.24 CFS. So it's doing quite a bit of math in here to come up with that, come up with that calculation. The curve number, as I said before, is is basically how much is defining how much water is going into the ground um, versus how much is running off. So when I make that 98 or I do all the way up to hundred, I have almost all the water running off the site. So instead of 2.5 inches, maybe I'd have 2.3 or 2.4. So a lot more water is running off. And then that results in a higher peak flow rate like that. All right. So I have that defined. All right. So now I'm going to go to, I'm going to just copy this over here, but you know, I just hit control and drag it over. And I'm now going to right click and I'm going to change. This is the post developed. So I'm going to change this to, like I said, 98 for, I'm going to make this 1.5 acres of impervious. And I'm going to make this, call this gra grass cover. Like maybe I have some landscaping on my site or a stormwater pond or some sort, but put 74, slightly better. Okay. So now I have 1.27. If I right click on this and go to arena i now have my post developed right here and I'm, now i'm on my pre-developed okay so you can see my pre and my post are compared to each other and you can see i have 0.24 cfs in my two-year post development i have 0.75 cfs and vice versa you know it's it's a lot higher in the post than it is in the pre so how do i get this down lower or equal which is what my goal is how do i make this 0.75 0.24 or less. That is where I'm going to put in a detention pond. And so I just drag that over I'm going to click a little blue dot and drag it right there. And now I'm going to right click on here and I'm going to make a stormwater pond. I call that detention pond. I am going to make this a uh, prismatoid invert. I'll just call this 100. Bottom width. I'll just start with a 20 by 20 pond. Call it five feet high. I Z three. So that's giving me, that's basically what I'm doing here. I am making a 20 by 20 foot pond and with side slopes. So basically that's the cross section of my pond. Take a cross section right through there. That's what you end up with. 20 feet by 20 feet. 
and this is three to one. So 33% side slope. Okay. And then the next important thing to do is make set our outlets. So there's multiple different popular outlet structures that you can pick. I am going to make this a little bigger here. Imagine you have a pipe coming in. All right, so you're going you're gonna to have some sort of weir in the middle here, and you're going to have another big pipe coming out right here. And then how does water get through this weir? And then you'll have some really small orifice right here. And this is the one that I was saying you'd have maybe half an inch or one inch, we'll call it one inch. Then you're going to have another, and there's two options of what you might have for your second level. You'd have either two more orifices, so they call that a three orifice, I'll call that one three orifice. Or instead of those upper two orifices, you would have uh, what's called a notch. So it would be like a little cut in here. And then water, it would be very thin, and then water would go through that. And then eventually, if there's a lar large storm event, water is going to go up over this, and that's your overflow. That's essentially kind of how it works. So for this one, I'm going to do the low flow orifice, which you pretty much always would have. I'm going to set that at the same elevation as the bottom of the pond. And I'm going to, this is an important thing. This is asking you, is that low flow orifice that way, or is it? that way and it kind of matters hydraulically and usually you would you'd have it at a vertical plane which is what i would do i'm going to pick this one for this one this makes the math a little bit easier on this discharge coefficient is this is a standard for a uh, orifice diameter i'm going to set this at one inch Let's see how that works you can also set it you could do a square orifice or a different shape if you want to do it i'm going to make this a three orifice weird and i'm going to have another orifice right there and Actually, probably one here and then one here. Okay, so yeah, I'll just probably start this as two. So I'm just going to, so I just right click on this, insert duplicate row, make this 102.5. I wanna make this one quite a bit bigger. I'll call this one three inches to the horizontal plane. I'm gonna call this one secondary just so I can see what's coming out, which we're. And then I'm not even gonna put the third one in. I'm just gonna make this my top one. It's my overflow. I'll call this four feet and so we have 104 and this will be my tertiary and try that okay so now i'm gonna run this and i will be able to see i'm just gonna hit the events again and i'm gonna update and i can see what is my outflow okay so let's look at these three numbers here's my pre-development 0.24 coming off my site is 0.75 coming out of my pond is 0.3 so i'm actually pretty close to that 0.24 i might have to make that that low flow orifice is a tiny bit smaller or make my pond a little bit bigger. 0.75 is actually quite a bit bigger than 0.53 and 1.06 is quite a bit bigger than 0.69. So yeah, I have reduced these numbers slightly. It's really not working the way I want it to. So I'm gonna go back to my pond, which is over a tiny bit. And let me go back to my outlets. I'm gonna make this, instead of one, I'm gonna make this 0.5. Apply. Now see, update. Now I have 0.29, still too big. 0.85, 1.13. So now it's actually, somehow in increasing my numbers. So I could keep making my, I could reduce, I could raise this up a tiny bit, 103, because you can see what's happening is barely anything's going out my primary. It's all getting into my secondary. And then it's basically, so I could either make my secondary pipe smaller, which I could try that, or I can move it up a little bit higher, or actually a little bit counterintuitive. I'm gonna make my, my main one a little bit bigger, a little bit funny how that works. See, now more is getting out my primary and actually it's, re it's reducing the amount of flow coming out here. But you can see I'm quite a bit too high for all these. Really what this is telling me is I need to make my pond bigger. Also, another thing that it tells you is that it tells you peak elevation 104.8. So it is getting all the way up to my overflow. So I definitely need to make this one bigger. I'm make this six inch. So now it's not making it up to my peak. It's all going out that second orifice. But again, still quite a bit too high. Go ahead and make my storage bigger. I'll make this 40 by 40. And now I'm way under 0 0.4, 0 0.36, 0 0.5. I'm actually, this this pond works. I, I could build a pond like this and it meets that flow control requirement. And in fact, it actually almost meets, it almost meets this other requirement, which uh, you would need to do to meet the hydro modification approach, which is required in some instances. So again, 50% of the two years. So Instead of meeting 0.24, I need to meet, meet 0.12. And I'm actually almost there. Actually, see, I'm going to see if I can hit that here. Instead of 1.2, I'm going to make this one. Still, too much is going out. Actually, again, it's just a little counterintuitive. Not that much is going out my main orifice here. I think actually I may have, I don't think I did anything special there. What if I make this two inches? 
0.15, still too much. Um, so you can see you can play around with this. I can make my pawn a little bit bigger. The real the real trick to trying to make it easier to meet is by going to your post development, figuring out a way to count more, make this higher. And now this was 80, let's see, this was 82. Now I'm at 0.33 and now I meet it. There's, there's a few tricks to get in there. And so you want to have as much pre-development, as high as pre-development, maybe this is actually you know, 18 minutes. And now that bumps it up to 0.34. So you can see the higher your pre-development rate, the easier it is going to be, the smaller your pawn's going to be. So you're probably wondering, is there an auto pawn button you can push in HydroCAD? Unfortunately, there is not. It is iterative, not that fast. Some people think this is fun. Some people think this is frustrating. There is another piece of software, which if you were trying to find a really fast way to do that, I would look up this Stormshed 3G. I used to use this, this software, Stormshed 3G. I am not sure if this still even works. Doesn't seem like it's even available. I know Washdot uses it. Where do you download it from? Good question. Washdot.shed3. Anyways, in Stormshed 3D, there is a button that is literally optimized on your pond. And you you can't ever make it as as optimized with the number of iterations as a human will be able to do. It's just it's impossible. So I recommend a software like that. I've tried to make a spreadsheet before doing this. I've never actually spend enough time to make it work, but I'm sure there's a way if you're you got a lot of time on your hands, I'm sure there's a way to do it. It's possible there are other software out there that do optimize, but that's one that I know that does Stormshed 3. Anyways, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this video has been helpful and please let me know if you have any, any more questions, comments, uh, leave it below. Thank you very much. Have a great day.